In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from John chapter 11, verses 1 through 44. Now a certain man was ill. Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mar Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. And for your sake I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. So Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask, them, ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when, Jesus, and when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his, fe fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to it was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me, 
I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips, and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Henry Francis Light served the Lord as an Anglican minister in England. As the story is told around the 1820s, he was visiting an old dying friend, William Augustus LeHunt. As Henry sat with his dying friend, his friend kept repeating the three words again and again, Abide with me. Abide with me. After leaving William's bedside, Henry then wrote the hymn and gave the copy of it to William's family, entitled, Abide with Me. Many believe that when Henry contracted tuberculosis and felt his own death approaching, he recalled the words he had written some 27 years earlier. As many think this hymn is a hymn for the close of the day, since it mentions evening, it actually is about life's evening or close. Abide with me, fast falls the eventide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless, abide with me. Helpless? How rare do we look at our life and think we are helpless? For we can easily be compared to the dry bones in the Old Testament prophet Ezekiel. Not only are we bones with no movement, no flesh, no muscle, nothing. We are bones that are dry. In other words, they have no life, period. No life in them whatsoever. As Ezekiel describes the Lord God, who brings flesh, sinews, tendons, muscles, and then life into those bones, also we are reminded that many times we are entangled in the devil's temptation as Jesus experienced Jesus was hungry due to fasting for 40 days. So he tells Jesus to make stones into bread. And Jesus responds and reminds us that our existence does not depend upon our being, but by God's. He breathes life into what was dead and brings it alive. That's why Jesus raising Lazarus is so powerful. Only God can raise what is dead and decaying to become life. Jesus is the life of us, the helpless. The hymn continues. I need thy presence every passing hour. What but thy grace can foil the tempter's power? Who like thyself, my guide and stay can be? Through cloud and sunshine, O oh, abide with me. The prayer continues, asking for Jesus' presence, the bread of life, to be with us every passing hour. Martha and Jesus have a deep conversation about the death of Lazarus, her brother. She somewhat understands the presence of Jesus by making the statement, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Her faith in Jesus shines, but I know that whatever you ask God, he will give you. Jesus' response is his response also to us in times of death, in the times of death of our loved ones. Jesus, he says, your brother will rise again. Martha is reminded of the resurrection on the last day, but Jesus comforts her with the truthful words, I am the resurrection and the life. The third stanza continues, Come not in terrors as the king of kings, but kind and good with healing in thy wings. Tears for all woes, a heart for every plea. Come, friend of sinners, thus abide with me. Even at the death of a friend, Lazarus, Jesus weeps. He knows the outcome of the situation because he is the life. Yet his concern and care is seen for a friend, 
Normally when a king would come into the presence of com commoners, they would tremble in his sight. For one single word could condemn them to death. Yet the king, the king of kings, is kind and good. Not only to Lazarus and his family, but also to us. His heart is for us. He is our friend, the friend of sinners. Still we pray, abide with me. Continuing the hymn, swift to his close ebbs, out life's little day. Earth's joys grow dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. O thou who changest, abide with me. How long does glory last upon this earth? Here today, gone tomorrow. Only the few who have impacted the future and now reside in the pages of the history books remain. But how long? Sooner or later they are forgotten by this or the following generations. What does last? What glory lasts? It is the stench of death. Lord, don't roll away the stone from the tomb, for he has been dead for four days. Or, it's been four days, and by this time the smell must be offensive. You can diagnose the smell of rotting and decaying flesh. It's all around us. But Jesus, he does not change. Oh yes, he died, but his flesh did not see decay. Abide with me. I fear no foe with thee at hand to bless. Ills have no weight and fears no hate, bitterness. Where is, thy, where is death's sting? Where grave thy victory? I triumph still if thou abide with me. Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him. She fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. Where have you laid him? Where is death's sting? Where is grave's victory? It is null and void because of Jesus. We triumph because of Jesus. Abide with me. In the final, the final stanza, Hold thou thy cross before my closing eyes, shine through the gloom, and point me to the skies. Heaven's morning breaks, and earth's vain shadows flee. In life and death, O Lord, abide with me. To speak and think morbidly is never happy. Death, dying, decay, bring sadness to our eyes, tears to our face. Hence what brings us joy is the cross, ironically. The cross before our closing eyes. The only way for us to have life is through the cross. The words of Jesus, Lazarus, come forth. The words of our Lord shine through the gloom of death. Can you imagine the amazement and the wonder at Lazarus' tomb? Now relate that amazement at your own tomb. As we go through life, death is not our goal or our outcome because Jesus went there for us. We hold up his cross before our eyes. Therefore, we continue to pray eternally, abide with me. Amen.